you are welcome you are about to listen to god's word and we hope that you are going to be blessed so but please before you listen do it to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so and don't forget to like comment and share this video god bless you but the bible says in verse 19 and that's where i want us to concentrate for tonight and the men of the city said unto elisha behold i pray thee the situation of this city is pleasant the situation of this city is pleasant if you look at the situation of this city it is what it is pleasant it is good and there is no reason why there should be barrenness there's no reason why we should not make progress there is no reason why we should remain dry and poor the situation of the city is pleasant as my Lord can see it. But there's a big but in that verse. But the water is bad. So we're going to spend a bit of time understanding what is this about permit me to ask you to look very very critically first at your own life there cannot be a mighty revival in Swaziland if the individual Swatis are not experienced the power of God so the first thing we are going to look at is that the situation of this city is pleasant. If we look at our own lives, if you should look at yourself, the situation is pleasant. On the outside, you look nice. On the outside, there is no reason why you should not be fruitful in righteousness. On the outside, we have a, a, a situation that is quiet. I have traveled into many other nations and I found that in several other nations, to be a Christian, you do so at the cost of your life. I travel to a place where to have even a church building was, a, was forbidden. I went to Oman and I realized that it was a crime for any Omanis to be converted. If they see you speaking to a native of that country, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're already a suspect. And do you know what they did? They only gave one small portion of land where they built a church like this. Only one church in the whole country. So all those who are Christians, and they are all aliens, they are either Indians, Sri Lankans, or anyone else outside. Regardless of their denomination, they have only one place where everybody must worship. So the Anglicans will come at 7 a.m. and they must finish their service by 8, 8.30 so that the Methodists the Roman Catholic, the charismatic churches, they all took tongues. 
And I was surprised that their service was not on Sunday. It was on Friday. Sunday was a normal working day. I was going there to preach. And I was surprised they said, uh, on Sunday, we are going to work. Friday is the only day that we can have fellowship and this is how we are going to do it. And I was surprised that the time allocated for this particular church is between 11 and 12.30. So that's the only time we can have. And we must finish because another group is waiting to take the space. I said, why can't you get land anywhere? I said, ah, it is a crime. And yet, people are seeking to become Christians in those land. But the situation in Swaziland is not like that. Am I right? The situation in this land is pleasant. Why should there be barrenness? Why should there be spiritual barrenness? Why should the matter of righteousness be a deficiency in our midst. The situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord can say it. Why is it that what we find is a complacent, a careless, a reckless, and promiscuous community why should the devil have the upper hand when the situation of the city is pleasant so the first challenge is that the men of the city they recognized and there can be no revival unless there is a recognition of personal need. The recognition of your own personal need is the beginning of the possibility of revival and restoration. And the first thing I will be asking you to check tonight, can you please look inside and recognize what is the situation? The men of the city, they came out. They said, Man of God, the situation of this city is pleasant, as you can see it. But, the water we are drinking is bad. And so the land is what? Is barren. Two things we are going to be checking tonight. I'd like you to look inside your own life. Why this barrenness? Why this spiritual dryness? Why this up and down? Rising today and falling tomorrow. Why this nominalism? That is sweeping across everywhere. That is rendering us quietly important. The situation of this city is pleasant. Can you first look inside? Can you first check? Now, we will talk about Swaziland later on. When we begin to strategize, how will God want us to labor together to see a move of God in this nation? But the first point, can you look into your own personal life? Where is the challenge? And can you be ready to acknowledge it? The Bible says, whosoever covereth his sin, he shall not do what? He shall not prosper. He shall not make progress. 
Those who know where their problem is and they decide to hide it, they can go far. When we were young, we used to make terrible mistakes with our lives. And some of us, we almost lost our toes. You know, when we went to school, you are playing football and you hit your leg and you are wounded. But because you don't want your parents to know that you are playing football when you should be in the class. And this wound has come. What did we do? We cover it. Sometimes we put sand inside the wound so that it will not bleed. And then we will cover it. Even though it's paining you, you do like this. Then you use star to walk as if you are doing something like this. You know, just to cover up. After a few days, the thing will swell up with a lot of pores inside, a lot of rottenness. You still don't want anybody to know. You just do like this. And then you are moving as if you are moving in style, trying to cover up the real situation. By the time the thing begins to smell very bad and the thing has become swollen and the parents discover, say, what did you do with your legs? Eh, you know, I was saying, eh, no, it's not paining me, it's not paining me. But you go back in the secret, you cry because it's paining you. And sometimes those wounds when gangrene. Sometimes those wounds, you know, when tetanus, and it costs much more to treat it than to have opened it up. Brothers and sisters, the first possibility of restoration for any life. is to be ready to be ready to point out what is the situation the situation of this city is pleasant but the water is bad as we are here tonight before the Lord before the Lord the Lord that sees what no man can see. The Lord that knows what many people cannot know. The Lord that does not need light before he can see. Both darkness and light, they are the same with him. The Lord does not need to peep before he sees. He sees everything perfectly. He does not need to be told. Even the thoughts of our hearts before we say it out. It registers with him. He knows. But why does he not just come and embarrass and say, I know you, I know you. It's not that he doesn't know you. But he gives you the opportunity to be the one to say, look Lord, my situation is pleasant. But I have problem. There's a need in my life that the outward situation has covered up. But I am not productive. I am barren. The men of the city, they had to come to acknowledge the real situation of their lives. We have come into a meeting here and as we are sitting together, let's face the reality. What's going on with you? What's the situation at home? What's the condition in your family life? What's the condition in your heart? You look nice on the outside. And nobody may possibly suspect that there's any problem but inside 
you are struggling. Inside, you are not the man that we thought you are. Inside, there is rottenness, but sometimes covered up with perfume. You try to kill the rottenness with the perfume of activity, the perfume of external presentation. If you do that to men, must we do that also to God? The men of the city, they came out. My Lord, the situation of this city is pleasant as you can see it. But that's not who we are. The ground is barren. There is barrenness. There is dryness. We are dying out. We are not like you think we are. We have a good name. We have a good name. And you remember Jesus. Writing to a church. In the book of Revelation. He said. You have a name. That you are alive. But you are dead. You have a good name. But the name is just like that. The reality has disappeared. That's the first thing the men of the city did. They cried out. And tonight. Tonight brothers and sisters. The Lord is in our midst. The Lord. Yes, we believe that God has blessed you through the message and the God's word you listen to. So please, we want you to subscribe. We want to comment and share your testimony with others. We also want you to like the, the video and share with your friends. God bless you.